A gunshot wound, GSW, also known as ballistic trauma, is a form of physical trauma sustained from the discharge of arms or munitions. The most common forms of ballistic trauma stem from firearms used in armed conflicts, civilian sporting, recreational pursuits and criminal activity. Ballistic trauma varies based on the bullet, velocity, entry point, and trajectory. Assault by firearm resulted in 173,000 deaths, globally, in 2015, up from 128,000 deaths in 1990. Additionally, there were 32,000 unintentional firearm deaths in 2015. Signs and Symptoms Trauma from a gunshot wound varies widely based on the bullet, velocity, entry point, trajectory, and affected anatomy. Gunshot wounds can be particularly devastating compared to other penetrating injuries because the trajectory and fragmentation of bullets can be unpredictable after entry. Additionally, gunshot wounds typically involve a large degree of nearby tissue disruption and destruction due to the physical effects of the projectile correlated with the bullet velocity classification. The immediate damaging effect of a gunshot wound is typically severe bleeding, and with it the potential for hypovolemic shock, a condition characterized by inadequate delivery of oxygen to vital organs. In the case of traumatic hypovolemic shock, this failure of adequate oxygen delivery is due to blood loss, as blood is the means of delivering oxygen to the body's constituent parts. Devastating effects can result when a bullet strikes a vital organ such as the heart, lungs, liver, or genitals or damages a component of the central nervous system such as the spinal cord or brain. Common causes of death following gunshot injury include bleeding, hypoxia caused by pneumothorax, catastrophic injury to the heart and larger blood vessels, and damage to the brain or central nervous system. Non-fatal gunshot wounds frequently have severe and long-lasting effects, typically some form of major disfigurement and slash or permanent disability. Classification Gunshot wounds are classified according to the speed of the projectile. Low velocity, 1,100 feet s, 340 m s. Medium velocity, 1,100 feet s, 340 m s, to 2,000 feet s, 610 m s. High velocity, 2,000 feet s, 610 m s. Bullets from handguns are generally less than 1,000 feet s, 300 m s, while bullets from rifles exceed 2,500 feet s, 760 m s. The U.S. military commonly uses 5.56 mm bullets, which have a relatively low mass as compared with other bullets, however, the speed of these bullets is relatively fast. As a result, they produce a larger amount of kinetic energy which is transmitted to the tissues of the target. Physics The degree of tissue disruption caused by a projectile is related to the cavitation the projectile creates as it passes through tissue. A bullet with sufficient energy will have a cavitation effect in addition to the penetrating track injury. As the bullet passes through the tissue, initially crushing then lacerating, the space left forms a cavity, this is called the permanent cavity. Higher velocity bullets create a pressure wave that forces the tissues away, creating not only a permanent cavity the size of the caliber of the bullet but also a temporary cavity or secondary cavity, which is often many times larger than the bullet itself. The extent of cavitation, in turn, is related to the following characteristics of the projectile. Kinetic energy, K equals 1 slash 2 mv2, where m is mass and v is velocity. This helps to explain why wounds produced by missiles of higher mass and slash or higher velocity produce greater tissue disruption than missiles of lower mass and velocity. The velocity of the bullet is a more important determinant of tissue injury. Although both mass and velocity contribute to the overall energy of the projectile, the energy is proportional to the mass while proportional to the square of its velocity. As a result, for a constant velocity, if the mass is doubled, the energy is doubled, however, if the velocity of the bullet is doubled, the energy increases four times. The U.S. military commonly uses 5.56 mm bullets, which have a relatively low mass as compared with other bullets, however, the speed of these bullets is relatively fast. 
As a result, they produce a larger amount of kinetic energy, which is transmitted to the tissues of the target. Yaw handgun bullets will generally travel in a relatively straight line or make one turn if a bone is hit. Upon travel through deeper tissue, high energy rounds may become unstable as they decelerate, and may tumble, pitch and yaw, as the energy of the projectile is absorbed, causing stretching and tearing of the surrounding tissue. Deformation Fragmentation Management As a rule, all gunshot wounds are considered medical emergencies that require immediate treatment. Hospitals are generally required to report all gunshot wounds to police. Workup Initial workup for a gunshot wound is approached in the same way as any acute trauma patient. A rapid first pass of the patient is conducted using advanced trauma life support protocol in order to ensure that the most vital functions are intact. These include a. Airway, assess and protect airway and cervical spine. b. Breathing, maintain adequate ventilation and oxygenation. c. Circulation, assess for and control bleeding to maintain organ perfusion. d. Disability, perform basic neurological exam including Glasgow Coma Scale, GCS. e. Exposure, expose entire body and search for any injuries while maintaining patient temperature. Depending on the extent of injury, management can range from urgent surgical intervention to observation. Unstable patients with signs of bleeding that cannot be controlled during the initial evaluation require immediate surgical exploration in the operating room. Otherwise, management protocols are generally dictated by anatomic entry point and anticipated trajectory. Neck a gunshot wound to the neck can be particularly dangerous because of the high number of vital anatomical structures contained within a small space. The neck contains the larynx, trachea, pharynx, esophagus, vasculature, carotid, subclavian, and vertebral arteries, jugular, brachiocephalic, and vertebral veins, thyroid vessels, and nervous system anatomy, spinal cord, cranial nerves, peripheral nerves, sympathetic chain, brachial plexus. Gunshots to the neck can thus cause severe bleeding, airway compromise, and nervous system injury. Initial assessment of a gunshot wound to the neck involves non-probing inspection of whether the injury is a penetrating neck injury, PNI, classified by violation of the platysma muscle. If the platysma is intact, the wound is considered superficial and only requires local wound care. If the injury is a PNI, Surgery should be consulted immediately while the patient is being managed. Of note, wounds should not be explored in the emergency department given the risk of exacerbating the wound. Due to the advances in diagnostic imaging, management of PNI has been shifting from a zone-based approach, which uses anatomical site of injury to guide decisions, to a no-zone approach which uses a symptom-based algorithm. The no-zone approach uses a hard signs and imaging system to guide next steps. Hard signs include airway compromise, unresponsive shock, diminished pulses, uncontrolled bleeding, expanding hematoma, brute slash thrill, air bubbling from wound or extensive subcutaneous air, strider slash hoarseness, neurological deficits. If any hard signs are present, immediate surgical exploration and repair is pursued alongside airway and hemorrhage control. If there are no hard signs, the patient receives a multi-detector CT angiography for better diagnosis. A directed angiography or endoscopy may be warranted in a high-risk trajectory for the gunshot. A positive finding on CT leads to operative exploration. If negative, the patient may be observed with local wound care. Chest Important anatomy in the chest includes the chest wall, ribs, spine, spinal cord, intercostal neurovascular bundles, lungs, bronchi, heart, aorta, major vessels, esophagus, thoracic duct, and diaphragm. Gunshots to the chest can thus cause severe bleeding, hemothorax, respiratory compromise, pneumothorax, hemothorax, pulmonary contusion, tracheobronchial injury, cardiac injury, pericardial tamponade, esophageal injury, and nervous system injury. Epidemiology. Assault by firearm resulted in 173,000 deaths, globally, 
in 2015, up from 128,000 deaths in 1990. Additionally, there were 32,000 unintentional firearm deaths in 2015. As of 2016, the countries with the highest rates of gun violence per capita were El Salvador, Venezuela and Guatemala with 40.3, 34.8, and 26.8 violent gun deaths per 100,000 people respectively. The countries with the lowest rates of were Singapore, Japan and South Korea with 0 0.03, 0 0.04, and 0 0.05 violent gun deaths per 100,000 people respectively. The United States has the 31st highest rate of violent gun deaths in the world with 3.85 deaths per 100,000 people in 2016. United States In the United States the majority of all homicides and suicides are firearm-related, and the majority of firearm-related deaths are the result of murder and suicide. When sorted by GDP, however, the United States has a much higher violent gun death rate compared to other developed countries with over 10 times the number of firearms assault deaths than the next four highest GDP countries combined. History Hieronymus Brunschwig argued that infection of gunshot wounds was a result of poisoning by gunpowder, which provided the rationale for cauterizing wounds. Ambroise Pair wrote in his 1545 book, The Method of Curing Wounds Caused by Arquebus and Firearms, that wounds should be sealed rather than cauterized. John Hunter argued that infection was not caused by poisoning. Until the 1880s, the standard practice for treating a gunshot wound called for physicians to insert their unsterilized fingers into the wound to probe and locate the path of the bullet. Surgically opening abdominal cavities to repair gunshot wounds, germ theory and Joseph Lister's technique for antiseptic surgery using diluted carbolic acid, first demonstrated in 1865, had not yet been accepted as standard practice. For example, 16 doctors attended to President James A. Garfield after he was shot, and most probed the wound with their fingers or dirty instruments. Historians agree that massive infection was a significant factor in Garfield's death. At almost the same time, in Tombstone, Arizona Territory, on July 13, 1881, George E. Goodfellow performed the first laparotomy to treat an abdominal gunshot wound M9 Goodfellow pioneered the use of sterile techniques in treating gunshot wounds, washing the patient's wound and his hands with lye soap or whiskey. He became America's leading authority on gunshot wounds and is credited as the United States' first civilian trauma surgeon. Wilhelm Röntgen's discovery of X-rays in 1895 led to the use of radiographs to locate bullets in wounded soldiers. Survival rates for gunshot wounds improved among U.S. military personnel during the Korean and Vietnam Wars, due in part to helicopter evacuation, along with improvements in resuscitation and battlefield medicine. Similar improvements were seen in U.S. trauma practices during the Iraq War. Some military trauma care practices are disseminated by citizen soldiers who return to civilian practice. One such practice is to transfer major trauma patients to an operating theater as soon as possible, to stop internal bleeding. Within the United States, the survival rate for gunshot wounds has increased, leading to apparent declines in the gun death rate in states that have stable rates of gunshot hospitalizations. Research Research into gunshot wounds is hampered by lack of funding. Federal funded research into firearm injury, epidemiology, violence, and prevention is minimal. Pressure from the National Rifle Association, the gun lobby, and some gun owners, expressing concerns regarding increased government controls on freedom and guns, is highly effective in preventing related research. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.